Good morning. He's represented the west side of Michigan in politics, but now he wants to be the CEO of our entire state. His name is Mark Schauer. He's a proud card-carrying Democrat who has represented the Battle Creek area in the U.S. Congress, the Michigan Senate, and the Michigan House of Representatives. And today, he joins me in our Detroit studio for an in-depth interview. It's Sunday, March the 30th. I'm Chuck Stokes, and this is Spotlight. Not the first time he's been on Spotlight. The first time was up at Mackinac, but the first time in studio. So for all practical purposes, the first time in our house. Right. And welcome to the show. It's Thank a pleasure you, Chuck. To have you. It's great to be here. All right, let's jump ahead a little bit. All right. Get through the campaign. Uh, you come through it victorious. Yes. You're the next governor of the state of Michigan. What's the very first act you will do? We have to support public education. I mean, this governor came in and cut a billion dollars from our public schools in addition, raise taxes on retiree pensions and on working families and on low wage earners, all to give a $1.8 billion corporate tax break to businesses that wasn't even tied to creating jobs, isn't working. But the key to building a strong economy and rebuilding our middle class is investing in our public schools, supporting public education. So I'm gonna put more money back into the classroom. If the governor were sitting here, he would say he made some cuts early on when he first became governor. Right. He cut out the fat, and then he put money back into education in a right. way that it was making a difference. Right. Well, the, the public rightfully doesn't buy that argument. I mean, what Rick Snyder has done is put more money into teacher retiree pensions, uh, MIPSers, as it's called. He's required by law to do that, by the way. But don't take my word for it. There's a website called kidsnotceos.com that shows school district by school district the cut year by year in funding to the classroom. Classroom classrooms have four or five hundred dollars less per pupil. That's why our kids are in more crowded classrooms. Teachers are making less than they were five and ten years ago, taking money out of their own pockets to to put into their classroom. So. Uh, kids are hurting as a result of Rick Snyder's cuts to our schools. In addition, Chuck, there's been a systematic privatization of education in Michigan. More dollars going to private operators of schools, which again are taking dollars away from our traditional neighborhood schools. Mark Schauer, uh, anytime you talk about putting more money into something, that usually means you have to take money out of something because there's not a whole lot of new money coming into the pool what would you cut from in order to put more money into education? Well, being governor is about a, being a leader. And this governor's brand of leadership has been trickle-down economics. That's the easiest way I can put it. Uh, $1.8 billion corporate tax break for businesses that aren't creating jobs in Michigan. We need to reorder our priorities. And public education is the single best way to build a strong economy, rebuild our middle class. So uh, I know of a number of areas in Rick Snyder's administration where there's wasteful spending, uh, uh, investments in his Michigan Economic Development Corporation that aren't creating jobs. So we need to reorder some of that and we should be putting that money into education. In addition, the school aid fund is being used for purposes that it wasn't intended for. So we need to dedicate those school aid fund dollars. We used to call it the K-12 budget. Right. Uh, it's being used for other things other than for our pre-K through public schools. Uh, your opponent is running an ad right now, or at least those supporting your opponent, um, that they just unveiled. They're spending about $400,000 across the state on it. Um, and the catch line is, shower is over and they paint you as a tax and spend Democrat. Right. Raise taxes some 40 odd times and that you had an opportunity to yeah. do the job that he has now done. Right. Your reaction. I mean, Chuck, it's classic. I mean, one of the reasons why we're tied in the polls now and that's why they're running an attack ad, they're very worried, is this governor has raised taxes on individuals in an unprecedented way. I mean, it, it's amazing the tax shift Again, a $1.8 billion tax giveaway for businesses paid for it by imposing a new tax on retiree pensions. That's aside from his proposed cut to Detroit city pensioners, 
uh, but he raised taxes on parents raising kids, and he raised taxes on the lowest wage earners in our state. So, of course, this attack on me is sort of what you'd expect. He doesn't talk about all of the tax cuts that I've supported, uh, including in Congress. It was a huge middle class tax cut. He also doesn't talk about the fact that when I was there in Congress, went to bat with President Obama and John Dingell and Carl Levin and Debbie Stabenow and Gary Peters to help rescue the auto industry, which is, you know, creating the jobs that, frankly, are booing Michigan's economy right now. He's not talking about that. For that average person out there, what do you think is going to resonate with them the most? Is it going to be education or is it right. going to be taxes? Well, I think it's going to be the economy, and I think it's a question of, you know, how is a lot Rick Snyder's economy kind of working for them? I mean, we have a governor who's out of touch with the fact that, you know, the fastest growing segment of job creation under his policies are fast food jobs. Uh, you know, we need an economy that works for everyone, not just for those that are benefiting from his $1.8 billion corporate tax cut. I mean, the middle class is shrinking as a result of Rick Snyder's individual tax increases. You know, his right to work for less policy is an attack on the middle class. And people see that education really is the silver bullet to rebuilding a strong economy. Uh, you're a proponent of raising the minimum wage in this state? Yes, that's, that's part of it, Chuck. I mean, you know, the minimum wage has lost its purchasing power. Um, you know, I, I think it's morally wrong and hurts our economy to have parents raising kids working full-time, $7.40 an hour as a minimum wage, earning that and raising their kids in poverty. And, you know, Rick Snyder opposes the raising the minimum wage. At the same time, he gave 80 and 90 percent pay raises to his chief investment officers top person gets $330,000 a year while opposing the minimum wage. And, you know, I've read the research. But he's a businessman. Uh, he came into that office <laughs> not as a politician, but as uh, someone who made their living in the free enterprise system. Right. And he's talking with uh, organizations such as the Michigan Chamber of Commerce, which right. says raising the minimum wage will not be good for business yeah. in this state, and you're going to hurt that small business person. Well, Chuck, to be clear, they're wrong. I mean, Rick Snyder's business credentials uh, really aren't that great for our state. He became the CEO of Gateway Computers, took all the manufacturing jobs to China, took the company bankrupt, and they made millions of dollars in the process. I don't think that's the kind of experience we need here in Michigan, and I think it shows from the decisions that he made. But, you know, the research is clear. The, the minimum wage doesn't cost us jobs. What it produces are uh, uh, more skilled workers on the job. It reduces turnover among those workers. And, you know, c contrary to his policies of raising taxes on these same people, uh, which takes money out of the economy, the minim increasing the minimum wage puts more money into people's pockets than that they spend in small businesses that hire Michigan workers. So it really is good for the economy. All right, Mark Schauer, we need to uh, rush to a break. All right. We'll hurry right back and we'll try to define a little bit who exactly is Mark Schauer? Right. We'll be right back. Don't go away. He's running to become the next governor of the state of Michigan. He doesn't have any Democratic challengers. Uh, some will credit him for that, but he does have a Republican challenger. Uh, <laughs> um, you and the current governor will debate over a lot of different issues. I think for some, they will look at where the state was when he came in mm -hmm. and there was a deficit. They'll look now and say there's a surplus. That alone shouldn't he get credit for, irregardless of yeah, where you may disagree on some individual yeah, issues. I mean, let's talk about it. I mean, I was in the legislature for 12 years. The Constitution requires that we have a balanced budget. Mm -hmm. You know, the legislature ultimately does that and then sends those budget bills to the governor. Uh, you know, we know where Michigan was, uh, you know, in 07, 08. Uh, I was elected to Congress in 08. We were losing 700,000 jobs a month as a country. It was a crisis. The auto industry was uh, on its knees and about to, to go out of business. And so um, that's, you know, we were, our state was hurting at that time, probably worse than other states in the country. And so what Rick Snyder did was took a deficit situation and made it worse. Um, he 
gave a $1.8 billion tax giveaway to businesses that wasn't tied to creating one job. And then he paid for that, you know, this bigger hole that he dug, by cutting a billion dollars from public schools, raising taxes on retiree pensions, which was a new tax on retirees, raised taxes on parents raising kids and on the lowest wage earners, and increased property taxes. So, what you're so that's how they got he a balanced surplus, the but they did it off of the backs of the people. You got it, and on the backs of our public schools and our kids. I certainly know that right to work, you would not have sided with this governor, correct? Well, exactly. I mean, right to work was nothing but an attack on the middle class, a, a, a political attack on labor unions, and if this nerd bean counter governor would have looked at the research states have enacted right to work have seen wages go down not just for union workers but for all workers so it's bad economics and its motivations were wrong what about his healthy michigan initiative right. uh, fighting for people to be able to have health care yeah that sounds no, like something that a lot of democrats I, i'm, them I'm on sure the back they're going to be attacking me for voting for the affordable care act i'm just waiting for that but look i've always supported people having access to quality, affordable health care. I mean, going back to where we were before of insurance companies dropping people or denying people because of pre-existing conditions or too, they're too sick. So Governor Snyder's right in uh, expanding Medicaid. Uh, it took him a long time. It was very difficult in getting there. Uh, he did uh, propose a state-run health care exchange. Uh, he failed with a legislature of his own party. Uh, when I'm governor, I will create a state health insurance exchange. What kind of urban agenda or initiative yeah. will be under a Mark Shower administration? Yeah. Well, uh, my background, I, my first professional job was as an urban planner, and then I ran a community development agency, an anti-poverty agency, providing a, a ladder up for people in communities. And what we need to do is make cities a priority. I mean, cities are the hearts of culture and, uh, and um, you know, innovation and attracting entrepreneurs. But what's happened is revenue sharing has been cut substantially, as well as a number of other economic development tools to our cities. That's, you know, made it difficult. Actually, resulted in fewer police officers and firefighters, hurt public safety. Uh, it's uh, uh, increased blight in our communities. Uh, it's hurt our infrastructure, and don't get me started on potholes. But uh, <laughs> we need to make our cities a priority because they are magnets for innovation. And look, it seems that this governor's urban agenda is to cut revenue sharing, eliminate a number of economic development tools that help cities grow business, and then when they're in deficit or financial distress, imposing emergency managers. That's not uh, an, an urban uh, strategy. All right. You, you mentioned it, so let's talk about it briefly. How would you fix Michigan's roads? Everybody complains <laughs> about the potholes, but no one wants their taxes raised. And well, so when you get down to nuts and you say, okay, yeah, we should spend more money on our roads. Right. Uh, you want me to raise your taxes? Then we start hearing no. Uh, right. What right. would you do? Well, we have to talk about why this governor's leadership has failed, why he's failed on this issue. But he we, says we should fix these roads. No, he no, no, says no. You're, you're right. I mean, he's been saying it since day one. Right. But he raised people's taxes already. He's raised taxes on the middle class, raised taxes on uh, uh, the working poor, raised taxes on retirees. But he did it to give a corporate tax break that's not creating jobs. I believe in a shared sacrifice where everyone pays their sh fair share. So would you now, increase the gas tax? When, when I just want to make this quick point. When I was in the legislature my first term, beat a Republican incumbent, had a bullseye on my back, I joined John Engler, who was governor then, in coming up with a bipartisan solution. And when I was in Congress, I made sure Michigan got more money for roads. So it will be a top priority of mine. Uh, I will you work think with, you can get it through the legislature? I, I know I can get it through, and it will, it will be a bipartisan approach because w we will do it in a fair way where businesses pay their fair share with trucks that, you know, pound our roads, pay their fair share, and then, only then, can we go to middle-class families and working people to say, hey, this is a fair shared sacrifice that's going to save you money on car repairs, it will be safer, and put... And I get it. It will put tens of thousands of working people to work rebuilding our infrastructure. Yes and no. Uh, a lot of people believe some of the reason the legislators in Lansing don't tackle the really tough issues, especially those issues dealing with money and taxes, yeah. is because they're afraid that they're going to be booted out in a system where we have term limitation. Has term limitation 
been good or bad for the state of Michigan? It's been bad. No doubt about it. Uh, no doubt. I, I came in before term limits hit the state house. Uh, I was elected in 96, and I saw how legislators could work together in a bipartisan way. That has changed in such a dramatic way. It's not good for policy outcomes and working together. All right. We'll have some more questions right after this break. Mark Shower, a lot of talk now about regionalization uh, and looking at Michigan that way. That is region versus region, not city mm -hmm. versus city. Mm -hmm. um, do you embrace that and do you feel that the sheer yeah. economics mean mm -hmm. that we have to start looking yeah. at that? So that might mean you know, yeah. the water department uh, and a whole lot of other things that have been considered sacred cows in the Detroit metro area. Well, as I've talked to people, particularly in metro Detroit, we have to look at uh, the region as uh, a metropolitan area for planning purposes, for economic development purposes. Institutions like the DIA are regional institutions now. and. Uh, you know, Kobo is a regional authority. I think it those seems are to be doing very well. Those are those are good examples. You know, yeah. we need to do that uh, 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 in, in terms of providing regional transit that works, for example. And I'd like to do more in terms of rail, and, and even you know, linking Detroit and Ann Arbor and so forth. So uh, it's true in West Michigan. There are some very good examples in the Grand Rapids area about communities working together. So, look, I think. Um, uh, there can be incentives, there can be um, uh, uh, some tools that are provided to communities to work together. Mm -hmm. Would you have voted uh, for Bell Isle? I realize that there's a, a city council vote, but it came from well, Lansing, the, Lansing the, pushed the it. Do you think that's a, a good move? I think, the, I, I think the state's involvement, the resources the state can provide are desperately needed and are very appropriate for the city of Detroit. And I'd like to see, a, see that in a number of other areas. I think the lease period is, is, uh, is too long, in, in my opinion. Um, but again, this sort of goes to this emergency manager approach. There really is no say by local elected officials. I mean, they really are an advisory capacity. My vision for how a governor should work with our cities is from a standpoint of, of partnership and uh -huh. collaboration. Name a Republican in this state that you greatly admire. Oh, gosh. Uh, there are a number of them. I mean, I, I wish we had more people like Bill Milliken. Uh, you know, that's a, 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 a long-gone era. I worked very closely with uh, Joe Schwartz, who was my senator. Uh, he was my congressman, and then I became his congressman. Um, you know, we had a very good relationship. Actually, I just mentioned I was in Macomb County giving an address this week. I mentioned Candace Miller. We worked hard on tran transportation issues, we worked hard on pipeline safety issues. So my stock and trade has been, you know, working across the aisle and finding solutions. Mark Schauer, is there a Democratic sacred cow that, as governor, you take on, um, even though uh, traditional Democrats may say, uh-uh, don't mess with that? You know, Can I don't you know that there are any sacred cows. I mean, look, I'm about getting results and building an economy that works for everyone. and. You know, my approach, for example, to education, you know, under our current governor, there are a lot of folks that don't have seats at the table. Um, I want to bring everyone to the table. Uh, it, it will take a village to educate our kids. I will have high standards, high expectations, and demand quality, but it's going to take all of us working together. That's the approach I'll take. You agree with the ruling that Judge Friedman made on the, on the same sex? Absolutely, sure. and I wish Rick Snyder would stop wasting taxpayer dollars and stop appealing that ruling and would fully recognize those legal marriages that occurred a couple of Saturdays ago. These are couples that were married under the law as deemed by uh, federal judge Friedman and it's very unfortunate that Rick Snyder will deny them their benefits under state law. Some quick yes or no's. Uh, immigration, uh, you would embrace it as governor? and encourage it? I've always supported comprehensive Im immigration reform. I did when I was in Congress. Charter schools, 
uh, expansion of charter schools in the state? Uh, not without accountability. The, this governor and legislature broadly expanded, lifted the cap on charter school. 80% of charter schools in Michigan are run by for-profit management companies. I want to take the profit motive out of education and support our traditional schools. There's some great models of charter schools, but there has to be accountability and oversight. The Educational Achievement Authority, uh, would it continue to exist under Mark Shower? Not under Minister? Governor Shower. You'd get no, rid of it? I would get rid of it. Debate, uh, something I think you probably would like with this governor. How many? As many as we can do. Uh, we'll do one a week. Uh, we'll do as many as we can well, do. Well, you know he's not going to give you that. <laughs> 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 All opponents I, I, want as many debates I, I as you can. Have, what do you think would be, think a, what do you think would be a reasonable number? Uh, you know, I would probably start with proposing a half a dozen or so. I think that's a reasonable number. We could do one per region across the state. Mm -hmm. And if he looks at you and says, uh, Mark Shar, I'm the governor, you get one debate, uh, maybe two, uh, will you take think, it or leave it? I, look, I think that would be a mistake for him. Uh, this is a governor who people are determining is out of touch with them uh, and, and um, you know, is failing the transparency test, whether it's doing favors for his brother's furniture company, his nerd fund. I think they're looking for transparency from this governor and the public would like a side-by-side -side, uh, opportunity to see the two candidates. And finally, uh, you have a lot of people out there watching you, for some, and maybe their first time at least seeing you on this program. What is one thing that they should know about Mark Shower that they probably don't know already? Uh, gosh. Um, my five favorite people in the world are my five grandkids. I have uh, four beautiful grandsons, uh, age six to uh, 20 months, and a beautiful little granddaughter. They're my five favorite people in the world, and this state is about their, f this, I'm running for governor because it's about their future. Nothing in your background that if you became governor would embarrass you and embarrass this state? I'm a pretty boring guy. <laughs> but I'm passionate. I'm passionate about people and All about right. our state and about our future. All right. Mark Shower, thanks so much for coming in. It's a pleasure sitting down and talking with you. Thank you. And we'll get you back many times throughout this campaign. Thank you. And we'll be back with some closing thoughts right after this break. Stay with us. Hey, I'm Chuck Stokes. We'll be back next week with more newsmakers in the spotlight. We hope you have a great week. This Week with George Stephanopoulos is next here on 7.